After the collapse of USSR, Ukraine was trying to gain relevance in the arms export, and they took some strange measures in order to achieve that. But ultimately, they failed. For more reasons than one. But it wasn't all for nothing, the end result are some weird and interesting tanks. Some of those tanks included the ones that were a combination of Soviet and Western technologies. Probably the most famous example is a T-84-120 Yatagan tank, but it was neither the first nor the last Ukrainian tank to feature the 120mm gun. Before we go any further, a quick word from my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. In the year 2000, Turkey announced that they will hold trials for a new main battle tank, with the condition that the tank must meet NATO standards. Ukraine has seen that as an opportunity to gain some recognition, and they picked their T-84 tank as basis for the new tank. It should be noted that T-84 was and still is their best tank, since they are seemingly unable to produce BM Uplot. The modified T-84 tank had some simple but very important differences, the main one being, of course, the 120mm NATO gun, instead of the original 125mm one. But the gun was not the only thing that was changed. T-84, like all tanks that come from the ex-USSR countries, has a carousel autoloader situated at the bottom of the hull under the turret. But to meet NATO standards, the tank had to feature a rack with blowout panels. The solution was to use a rear turret bustle autoloader similar to the French Leclerc tank. That way, the tank could still maintain the crew of three, have an autoloader and meet NATO standards. The tank that was offered to Turkey had its machine guns replaced with the ones that used the NATO standardized ammunition. It's not stated which specific machine gun was mounted as coaxial, all that's stated is that it's an FN machine gun, so it was either chambered in 556 or 762 NATO. The remote heavy machine gun was replaced with M2 Browning chambered in 50 BMG. The tank also featured French communication system. But the rest of the tank was pretty much identical to the T-84. It had the same base armor as well as Norge explosive reactive armor. One thing this tank had that the other tanks from the competition did not was the soft kill active protection system Varta that included dazzlers and laser warning receivers, which would warn the crew if the tank was lased by a laser rangefinder or a laser guided missile. It also had the ability to fire a modified 120mm anti-tank guided missile. But it also lacked what all other tanks had, thermal imaging system. It featured the same fire control system as T-84, which only has passive image intensifier for both the gunner and commander. The tank had to compete against Germany's Leopard 2, apparently a newly developed Leopard 2A6, French Leclerc and US modified M182 Abrams with a German diesel engine. The original plan was for the winning tank to be accepted into the service of Turkish armed forces and for the winning country to supply 250 vehicles while the domestic production is set up in order to produce the tank domestically, up to a figure of 1000 tanks. The trials started in 2001, but they were never finished. In February 2002, a catastrophic earthquake hit Turkey, which resulted in a lot of economic problems, and the competition for the new tank had to be cancelled. Instead, Turkey turned to their old plan from the late 90s, get old Leopard 2A4 tanks from Germany. And thus, they purchased old Leopard 2A4 tanks from German storage, which had to go through a massive overhaul at Kraus Maffei Wegmann. And just like that, Yatagan's fate was sealed. The one tank is still operational, but majority of Western components were replaced with Ukrainian ones. The tank was first shown after the competition on a military parade in 2018, and it had to go through some restoration in order to properly run. 
Many believe that it was just for show and that the tank is not capable of going into combat, but in my opinion its place is in a museum, because it's simply so unique. But that is most likely not going to happen anytime soon, since the tank is still listed on the website of Ukrainian arms expert, so if you're interested and have the cash, you can buy one for yourself. Please give me money, need to find a plot. Yatagan was not the first Ukrainian tank to feature the 120mm gun. It borrowed a lot from the previous project called T-72-120. Apparently, it was planned to introduce the 120mm NATO gun for Ukraine's domestic service, for simple reason that their tanks can't fire any modern ammunition, including the latest BM Oppot, and are stuck with firing old Soviet ammunition from the 80s. Introducing the 120mm gun would allow them to use any ammunition from any NATO country. And somewhere in the 90s, they tried to develop a tank that would have such features. T-84 was still brand new at the time, so the guinea pig was to be a T-72 tank. They installed the 120mm gun with a rear Basel autoloader which stored 22 rounds, the same that was later used on Yatagan. The total ammo count, just like in Yatagan, was 40 pieces of ammo. 22 in the outloader and the rest in the hull. The tank received the Norge Explosive Active Armor and the same fire control system as T-84, which was still lacking at the time, but was still better than the one of T-72. And just like Yatagan, the tank is still offered on their website. Please give me money. After Yatagan, there was another attempt to make an expert tank with a 120mm gun, and they chose none other than the T-62. The thought behind this probably was that T-84 would be too expensive for the countries they were considering as potential customers. So they grabbed the T-62 tank, installed the same gun, but this time no autoloader, because T-62 is a tank crewed by four members, which means one of them is a loader. They also installed the Norge Explosive Reactive Armor in the tank, because the base protection of T-62 is completely insufficient for modern standards and by installing Norge, they somewhat improve the protection. But so far, none of those tanks have been sold. Yatagan was the closest one to that goal, but I honestly doubt it would have been chosen. For one simple reason, Ukraine would definitely not be able to deliver the 250 tanks that were required. It took them 7 years to deliver 49 BM Oplot tanks to Thailand. So just imagine how long would it take for them to deliver 250 tanks. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. At the end, Yatagan is a decent tank on paper, but that's the case with a lot of Ukrainian tanks. The reality is that they are unable to produce or maintain any of their better tanks and are stuck with using and upgrading stock of old tanks for as cheap as they can. They do have some interesting ideas, and they do have talented engineers, but what good does it do when the industry is unable to follow up on those ideas? That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new. That also helps a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.